are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. With us this morning is uh, immigration attorney here in town, Elliot Osment, well known for representing a lot of uh, individuals, <coughs> many of your clients from Mexico. Um, many of them here undocumented, dealing with issues over the years. You've seen him involved in, in many of these cases. And uh, of course, he's you know on our show this morning paying very close attention to what's happening in D.C. And, and President Trump with some of these executive orders and how they're going to play out. Uh, we'll get back to the phone calls in a moment, but I wanted to ask you, if you would, to just kind of, what do you anticipate maybe being some of the first legal challenges, both here and other attorneys that we'll be dealing with in other, in other cities, as some of these orders take effect? What do you think you'll see first? Well, I think, first of all, there's going to be a challenge uh, by sanctuary cities, those that exist in the country, to this new regulation or new executive order. Mm -hmm. that President Trump has just signed yeah uh, because I think those are those raise some very serious issues yeah are you talking about all right so some of them with in regard to people coming through that are refugees and maybe what, what did you call it uh, release or not being catch and release catch and release now that's at the border okay those are at the borders but uh, people that are already here mm -hmm. uh, that are not crossing the border mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me have have migrated to many cities that have declared themselves to be sanctuary cities. That mm -hmm. includes New York City, San Francisco, Chicago, Boston, mm -hmm. a lot of the major metropolitan areas. And what President Trump has said is that he's going to cut off funding to mm -hmm. those cities. That's right. And uh, uh, they're going to be challenging that, and you're going to be seeing that right away. I already see California gearing up to do this. Do you think in light of what's happening, though, right now, there are some who maybe have the ability to that now are saying we're going back to Mexico on our own? Well, that could happen. But most of the people that are here now have been here for years. They're established. They have families and jobs. And uh, if they ever get thrown into immigration court, there may be uh, some ways that we can defend them and get them relief in immigration court. A person that's been here for 10 years uh, might qualify for something called cancellation of removal. If they've behaved and haven't had any serious arrests and they have a, a u.s citizen in their family that's sick that would uh, create a hardship on that u.s citizen child for example mm -hmm. who would have to suffer extreme hardship if they had to depart with their family back to Mexico, there is a vehicle in immigration court called cancellation of removal hmm. that would give those people relief. What that is is just a fancy name for the immigration judge giving them a green card. I see. And uh, that has been used by our office to help a lot of people that have been here a long time. So I would ask any immigrants that might be listening in to not lose hope, not lose faith, because sometimes being thrown into immigration court could be the best thing that could happen to them. Interesting. And because that relief, cancellation well, of removal, is only available from an immigration judge. Where is the immigration court here? Where, 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 where is that? Where, we don't have a court. Okay, I didn't think we had one here. We don't so, have a court here in Nashville. So, uh, what are your the, clients the court do? is in Memphis. in Memphis. Okay, I was just wondering. Okay, that's what I thought. But right. we have telephonic hearings with that court uh, in my office. A closed circuit TV or just over the telephone? Just over the telephone. Interesting. All right, let's go to uh, Larry. Larry, good morning. Yes, yeah, good morning. Uh, hi, Thank Larry. You for taking my call. Sure. Uh, first thing is, before you flick your finger on the button to uh, turn me off, I'd appreciate if you wouldn't, because I oppose what's being done this morning, and I oppose this man that you got on the show. Like that one guy said, all you ever have is a is a liberal or a Democrat on there in that manner, and this man is about as far as you can get in them areas. And furthermore, it's just like this. The man speaks lies when he takes his constitution is in that manner. It is not immigration, immigrants. It is called an invader. Invading our country, anyone, I don't care who they are, come into our country illegally, has invaded our country. That's what the constitution says. Anybody can take and read the constitution, read it for themselves, uh, I encourage them to do so, because I read it frequently. And that this here lawyer has an agenda, and I don't like people doing that kind of stuff, and, and setting on a television show like that, not having nobody to oppose him, like that guy earlier talking about. 
Well, thanks. I mean, that's the whole point of having a call-in show. We oftentimes have, as opposed to a debate with different people, and we've had folks on this program that have been on the other side of this immigration issue, and we'll have more. But this way, you just now called in and opposed him, okay? That's the way this works. I don't have a dog in this fight, and uh, at this point, uh, it's a chance for him to talk about what he's going to be dealing with, because he's going to be seeing this and dealing with the legal challenges that will come up, which I think is very interesting to hear, whether you agree with him or not, what he's going to be doing. Now, what do you think of his point? And again, hey, right here, that's the point of call-in shows, Larry, that you can challenge him. That's what you just did, so relax. So, how do you feel about um, what he said under the Constitution that these are invaders? Well, I think he has a right to say what he wants to say. And I appreciate you taking the call from a, uh, a gentleman like that. Oh, sure. That. I mean, we're real censor it. And we, uh, I, I respect his right to speak what he speaks. But I would uh, suggest to Larry that what he might want to do is instead of just reading uh, an unannotated copy of the Constitution, he might want to read a copy of the Constitution that's annotated with Supreme Court decisions. And he'll learn if he reads Supreme Court decisions under the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment or the search and seizure provisions of the Fourth Amendment, that those provisions have been interpreted to protect the rights of immigrants. And uh, everything that I've said here this morning is supported by the law as the Supreme Court has interpreted the Constitution over the years. I have not invented any of this. And so what we try to do in my office is to apply the law to protect our clients. That's our job. That's what we're, that's what we're paid to do. And I have hanging in my law office a tribute to a minister whose name was Pastor uh, Niemöller. Mm -hmm. He said uh, he, he was arrested by the Nazis during World War II and spent several years in a Nazi jail. Martin Niemöller. And he said, first, they came for the socialists, and I was not a socialist, so I said nothing. And then, as time went by, they finally came for him. The reason we protect these rights, Larry, is not because we think these people that are our clients have been perfect. They're not. But we protect those rights in part because if we don't protect their rights, when the government comes after them, guess what? Mm -hmm. The government might be coming after Larry next year. Mm -hmm. And then what is Larry going to do if those rights have been trodden under by a government? So we are here to put a check on government uh, uh, activity that's illegal. And I think Larry would appreciate that if he would read Supreme Court law that has interpreted those provisions of the Constitution. So Larry, thank you for your call, and thank you for the opportunity of listening to my response. Let's go to Diana. Hi, Diane. Hi. Good morning. <coughs> glad you're having this program. I've evidently had a lot of misconceptions about this myself, but what I'm finding listening to y'all is that this just is not a black and white issue. I mean, it's there's a lot of variables in it. Basically, the ones that I'm most scared of are the ones that come in here and do commit a lot of crimes and sabotage and but the riots that we're having right now between Americans is stupid too. I mean they're just hurting themselves and hurting business people and I don't think there I don't know if there is an answer anymore. Um, and I appreciate the show but mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tough, Diane. Thank you for your call. I mean, there's a, a lot of emotion around this issue. You can even hear in her voice the fear of what's going on in the world. And I think some of what she touched on is a little bit off topic of the immigration issue. But she did bring up, you know, illegals that are here that are committing serious crimes. Now, I assume in those cases, you know, they're dealt with under the law in this country for that serious crime. And then at some point, after perhaps they've done their time for whatever that is, then they would be sent back to wherever they came from? Well, that's certainly the practice, even in in sanctuary cities. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that for a moment. Okay. New York City <coughs> is probably the most well-known sanctuary city in the nation. 
it prides itself and announces to the to the world that it is a sanctuary city for undocumented immigrants. But even New York City has a, a, a law that the city council passed, now in effect, that lists 176 crimes that if an undocumented immigrant is arrested and convicted of that crime, they will then be turned over to ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, for removal. Now, that's true even in a sanctuary city. Mm -hmm. So this idea that we have a lot of undocumented immigrants that are just getting away with murder in this country and being turned loose to prey again on our citizens is just not true. That is a rumor that's been ginned up by demagogues that want to scapegoat immigrants in this country. I resent that. I deny that. That is not policy anywhere in this country. All right, let's go next to uh, Tony. Tony, good morning. <coughs> good morning. Hi, Tony. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Nick, thank you for having Mr. Osman on. Uh, what I want to say is uh, for years, the American citizens have been ripped off by scrupulous business leaders and mechanics and whatnot. So when the Mexicans come here, they got the cheapest labor, they give you a fair price, and they do it right. People overlook that. Now, the next thing, you got these people coming here, the Mexicans and the other citizens, <coughs> as this babysitting their kids, cleaning their yards, uh, working in the hotels, um, and a lot of other work. But then uh, building these buildings, these hotels, these people living in, and enjoying free lifestyles at a great rate. People overlook that. But I want to really say, I really thank them because they're not rude when I go on the stove. They don't break in line. They don't cuss you out. They don't discriminate. They don't talk crazy to you. If you treat them right, they treat you right. And uh, the American citizens better wake up because this land can be filled with hate. And we all are immigrants. And I don't understand why nobody can look at it. The next thing is the holidays, Nick. Yeah. When the holidays, when I was a child, come up, all the stores are closed. All the stores are shut down, rejoicing the holidays and whatnot. But when the immigrants came here, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about being overcharged for food and groceries and mm -hmm. not to go to the corner stores on the market. Okay, hang tight on that. I, I'm just wondering, if all of a sudden we were to snap our fingers in this country and every single undocumented immigrant that's here under whatever capacity vanished, do you think it would be a, a shot to the gut of the economy? Oh, there's no doubt. The Cato Institute, for example, said just recently that if all un undocumented immigrants, just undocumented immigrants, were to be vanished from the country, our gross domestic product, our GDP, would be reduced by 1.2 percent. Which is a million. Well, yeah. they don't uh, that, that doesn't sound like much, but over 10 years, that amounts to 1.2 trillion, with a T, trillion dollars. Hmm. That's how much they are contributing to our economy. And so if they all vanished, that's what's going to happen. And you talk about a gut punch to this economy, we would be in a recession and a depression the likes of which we've never seen. Let's go to Steve real quick. Steve, good morning. <coughs> Good morning. How are you? Hi, Steve. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, well, I think this is a matter of just everything being liberal policy, because if we didn't have half of all Americans on some form of government assistance, uh, then they would be working. We wouldn't need immigrants, but everyone wants to not work. And uh, that's the long and the short of it. They're here, so we don't have to work, <laughs> so that we don't have responsibility. Interesting. All right. Um, yeah, if, if there were more people working, Americans, and he seems to think so many are on public benefits that maybe they're not, and the, the folks coming over are willing to work. They want to make money and send it back, and they don't qualify when they come here if they're undocumented, correct? For a lot of people think that they come here undocumented, that they qualify for benefits. No. That you, they they don't, can't get anything. They, they don't qualify for benefits. In fact, when uh, a couple comes into my office, for example, where a U.S. citizen has married an undocumented person, mm -hmm. uh, during that process of legalizing their spouse, 
What they have to do is they have to sign what's called an affidavit of support that assures the federal government that if their spouse goes on welfare in the next 10 years, that that U.S. citizen spouse will be obligated to repay the government whatever the government spent in benefits to the undocumented spouse. And that's even after that spouse becomes legal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and gets a green card. And so there are protections built into the system. And what's more, if that spouse has not been working outside the home, the, the, the U.S. citizen spouse has not been working outside the home and uh, doesn't make enough money to meet the minimum criteria for a standalone affidavit of support, that U.S. citizen spouse must get a friend or a relative or someone who is a U.S. citizen that does make enough money to sign a supplemental affidavit of support. So we have two people on the hook. Wow. Listen, we we have so much more that we can talk about, and we covered a lot of bases, took several calls. We have uh, to take a break. I mean, just to wrap it up because we have uh, a special guest coming on at the end of the show to talk about a great charity that's going on in town. But, Elliot, right, we'll do this again. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Thank Nick. you so much. It's and, been a pleasure. And again, Elliot Osment, obviously his point of view, and, and the point on this is we are going to have people as well <laughs> that will have the other point of view, as opposed to having, you've been on before, we've had heated debates between two people, no one gets a word in edgewise. The idea is to have you on today, and of course, there are those out there that have other points of view that will be coming on the show as well. We're going to do a lot of these programs as we see these executive orders kick in on both sides of the issue, but I think this was good for a chance for people to ask you questions as well. It's nice to see you, sir. Thank well, you for thank coming Well, thank you, on. Nick. I appreciate the, the we'll opportunity to be here. Absolutely. We'll take a break. When we come back, a very special guest on a very special fundraising activity coming up soon. It's a lot of fun. We'll be back right after this. If you 